Hello, my educator family. We welcome you to another Analytics Thursday. Let me trust that you have been enjoying the break so far and you have been using your time wisely. And by using your time wisely, I should think that you're all viewing the videos that are being put up. If we are focusing during the month of Adaptable August on tips for administrators as they would have led during the pandemic and going forward. Yes, we say adaptable because as educational leaders and teachers with no right, we need to understand our context and the times we need to make our, our learning process to, to follow suit in that regard. I trust that as we build up the learning as much as you sharing to with others. So on Sunday, we had our third feature and this was from Krishna Hilton, who was the principal of the Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in Canada. And she would have shown some valuable information as a small Christian school, how did she manage the time and her tips as we go forward. So with me, we have our analyzer, Mr. Vice Principal acting at Franklin Hammer school in Manchester and to welcome you all and welcome to you Ms. Carty as you will share with us insightful, insightful, insightful analysis point from Sask Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Go ahead. Good evening everyone. I am really happy to be here again Mrs. Boswell Lewis and I did enjoy the session that we had on Sunday with Mrs. Hilton. And right away, I must share one of these with you. Um, in sharing, in her sharing, I picked up, and I hope the persons viewing also picked up, that is important for us to have a back-to-school plan. Some guidelines written that, not only guidelines for the teachers, but guidelines for the parents, guidelines for the students, and the guidelines included, she pointed out, a sanitation plan the teaching learning process, what is going to be happening. And I beg to uh, put in too, that these guidelines are back to school must involve what is happening for lunch, what will be happening for break. So it is important for us as educators, as we go back to school, learning from what Mrs. Hilton shared, that we must have a plan, must have guidelines set for engagement come September. Awesome, I do believe so as well. And, um... Might I just add that even um, hearing now on the news, we would have been expecting school to start uh, for us in Jamaica of September 6th, but we're now hearing that while it's September 6th, so there are plans afoot to stagger um, primary school and to start high school and high school plus go back in mid October. And um, when I listened in, I read on a present. Um, we must never ever place it and believe that okay because we're not going to go back to school just need to wait a little bit further down we make all the plans we do all the sensitization processes with parents with stakeholders so everyone will be in on the information in on what we'll be doing so when we begin they won't be I truly believe that when as administrators we can avoid hiccups, we should by all means try to avoid it because it disrupts the teaching and process that it plays. So I do agree with that point to Madam Carty. Yes, and you know, um, throughout the month of August, I noticed this Mrs. Hilton is our third presenter and all three presenters emphasize the importance, as you said a while ago, communication ensuring everyone yeah. knows what is happening. One thing Mrs. Hilton pointed out is that as an institution, they had to ensure that they followed the guidelines set by the Ministry of Education and I may input the Ministry of Health. It is important that if you're gonna keep the staff members and the children safe, that whatever guidelines are set, whatever COVID-19 protocols are set as for the institution, then, sh then we must ensure that it is followed by all parties who enter that compound. Yes, I do believe so. 
that is important because especially to administrators and teachers, as we now see that um, it has been confirmed in Jamaica that we have 22 cases of the new Delta variant, that we have the extreme effort as we go about this and learning, even if we're going to be having plans for the face to return face to face school distribution of materials. I would have heard um, Aunt Matt was mentioned that time in which you know we didn't have devices, then the distribution we have to proceed with caution. And might I just add here that I would like to extend condolences to the um, members of Region Five and other regions that would have lost um, principals, administrators during this time, and also teachers and family members. Let me just extend my feelings on behalf, you know, all of us as colleagues, because we do know that these, this is trying time. So educators, we have to ensure that we are um, at our optimal best in, as it relates to our health, and that we're taking care and, and using up the, the, the procedures that are established so that we can minimize this product, this COVID virus. That's true. And note too, that is important for us, as Mrs. Hilton pointed out, a reminder, a reminder for some, but for others, it may be a learning point too, that a sanitizing guideline must be set. And it's a part of, of, of the back to school plan. And she ensured that there were sanitizing stations all over the school premises. And there are times too when the children were scheduled to go and do some sanitizing. It is important, as you're saying, uh, Mrs. Bodwell, Boswell Lewis, in order for us to continue being safe, we need to ensure sanitation is, is done throughout the entire facility, whether it be the students, the teachers, or the visitors that may happen to enter the compound. Um, one thing um, she pointed out in regards to the stakeholders, you know, it's a, it's a private institution, a private Christian institution, but I see just as Mrs. Michael Jones did last week and Mr. Largy the week before, that they, 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 they tapped into the, um, their stakeholders. So they needed equipment, whether it be masks, uh, any other resource that mm -hmm. they may need, you find that they, they asked yeah. and the stakeholders were able to help them. And she pointed that when it came to manipulatives in the classroom, they tried their best to ensure that these were able to be sanitized easily because you still wanted the kids to participate in the teaching learning process as best as is possible. So they now had to think out of the box and say, okay, how can we provide these manipulatives and provide them in such a way that they are easy to be sanitized for the children? But once again, the stakeholders assisted in getting the needed resources that the students and the school needed. Yes, that is absolutely necessary. We cannot proceed in a time like this without the stakeholders. They are valuable to the business community, the past students, everyone. They are valuable to the teaching learning process. We've seen more than ever because we need data plans, devices, and we have to think smart and think about how can we get them on board and how can we help the students during this process because I'm pretty sure that while some students will be able to get on September 6th, we're going to still have those who are out there who just, they don't, just don't have any access to devices, have any access to data and what are we going to be doing, what will administrators be doing in that regard. So the time is now to plan wisely. And even when we return to um, the face-to-face -face modality, um, we would have seen a new education, a new era in the sense that we have to be integrating technology. And if we are going to limit the spread of the, the virus and the contacts and all of that, it is important that as educators were used in the technology. So instead of getting this, I was hoping to hear something from the minister uh, and the ministry in regard to that, that we're getting some e-textbooks. It should not be a time though in which we're still printing books, e so that children come back. Even if the teachers can check on the screen and that is because they can't be passed out paper and books and all of that during this time. So stakeholders will be very important to help us in minimizing 
this prayer to ensure that accessibility is there for all. So I do agree on that. Yes, thank you. Um, one thing for sure, as you said, remember, things are always changing, always changing. Therefore, it yeah. is important for us to give support, support to the teachers, support to the parents, support to the students. And the support isn't only about giving of resources. And Mrs. Hilton pointed it out when she was saying for tips for reopening. The support, I believe, can also be emotional support. You know, mm -hmm. it's a different time. And many persons, um, it will take them time to adjust to this new normal that we are experiencing. There are children yeah. who have, they have begun primary school and they still don't know what their school looks like apart from pictures and maybe a video. They never visited this school. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we have to think of the emotional health of our staff members and the emotional health of our students. And so support needs to be given to the stakeholders in these various areas. That's, that is so true. The emotional part of it is very important. And I'm going to be pointing back the, the space that we did and the social, emotional cell. It's very important because at the time, when most of our students, they have been backed down into the online teaching, um, being there and just looking at the screen and just hearing and not being able to go into the physical setting, they're going to need great help to, to help them to overcome the emotional part that a brain that takes in relationship to some parts of the by, by, by COVID-19, what it has caused education. And so teachers and administrators, I'm asking you, please be social, emotional, and theory some consideration. And just do the class and just start your lessons like that. And just have general devotion like that. We can't just have club, club, club time like that. We will have club time just like that. We have to build the relationship. And a part of the social, emotional, and theory, Mrs. Kaki speaks about building families and engaged communities. And that building relationship, families and engaging communities, and that is going to become what we do from here on as we institutional learning. That's true. That is so true. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, the, the, the final thing that I want to share as we remember that while we are building the relationships and we are teaching, we ought to ensure that that, that the, the teaching learning process is interesting and fun for these children. So as we move yeah. forward into the, the new school year, we have to plan ahead. It's important. Yeah. We have to plan yeah. ahead. Yes, we know that the situation today may be different than tomorrow. So you make a plan, but we have to think ahead and plan ahead and look at all the various areas and all the various things that can possibly happen and see what we can put in place to ensure that the teaching learning process continues when we do reopen for school, whether it be online or face-to-face -face or whatever mixed modality yes. it happens to. Yes, I do agree with that. We have to call the, the variables and we have to necessary adjustments as we, we move forward. And so, you know, um, over all, I think that this month has been a very exciting month, adaptable August. And I must say that we for, for the next week, for next week and the other week, we have two excellent um uh, lineup. And that's um principal Tim Dale of Poros um primary and infant, and the great and lovely Dr. Tanisha Ingleton, who will close off the month um for us. And so educators, we're just here to empower you and to say to you, adapt as much as you can. Nothing is wrong with collaboration. Nothing is wrong in terms of what's happening in your school. To, to adapt the best principles. You know, I'm sorry, um, it is a total good pattern. So something is happening in the school and it is working. Why not try to adapt it in your school and how you can set it off and get it up and running and so um i believe that you know there are greater things ahead for us and it is just for administrators and teachers and us we're all leaders education system to make ourselves available and to be consistent with what we do so do you have any more pointers that you 
you to share with us? No, that is it for today. Just reminding us yeah. to make sure we are making the teaching and learning process as interesting as possible. And as I said before, let's plan ahead with our team members so we can move forward. Awesome, awesome. I want to thank you so much, Madam Carty, for bringing this level of analysis. It was short and spicy and to the point. And it has I know you may be listening out. You'd have heard uh, Mrs. Hilton made mention of the vaccination and all of that. This is something that you will have to consider. As they would say, every club stands on its bottom. It is something for all of us to, to, to listen, listen and information, the best decision that we can make to ensure that our schools are safe, our children are safe, our families are safe. As we go back, as, a, as we plan for this, we go back into the system to teach and to um, communicate that whole bond that we have to take on, whether early September or late October. So let us thank you so much, Madam Carty, for grace us with your presence and your knowledge um, today. Our analysis sir, and educators, I look forward to getting the comments. Um, and for you to share with other share with parents and hear what's going on, can also see what their role and their abilities are like as we go back to the school system, as we go back to school in 21, 2022. And I'd also like to encourage you to be safe, enjoy what's left of the time. It's going to be September 6th, and whether they are not, the school year will begin. The best thing that we can do is to start with some reflective thinking and start planning ahead to meet the challenges that will come. Because we're not going to sugarcoat it. There are going to be challenges, we do challenges, but when we are strategic and we plan ahead and we have our new plans, it will make it a little bit easier for us. I'm going to see you, take care, work good and all the best. We have empowered you, go likewise and do that within the education system. Thank you so much.